All right, so Rivian had an event today and we've talked about R1T, their first pickup truck, R1S, their first SUV. And uh, you might've seen the Waveform podcast where I talked with RJ, the CEO of Rivian about the future and R2. And that's what we finally have here. And we also have RJ with us here <laughs> to help walk us uh, through this. So first of all, thanks for joining me yeah, thanks, again. Thanks for being here. I would love to look around this, uh, this R2 here for a little bit because yeah. first of all, we talked about it keeping all of the same character mm -hmm. of R1, yeah. but you yeah. wanted to bring it down in price, yep. make it accessible, yep. but still be a really fun, capable vehicle yeah. and yeah. bring Rivian to more people. Yep. So let's look at this, let's look at this R2 and see how much of that character we see here. We saw the teasers. It's still got the same face, which I think is fairly iconic, so I don't blame you for not changing yeah, yeah. that. But what are some things that are different about R2? I feel like the size is the number one thing. Yeah, it's a much smaller vehicle. I mean, as we walk around it, we've got, as you said, the iconic front end, um, still a, a beautiful front trunk. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a two row vehicle, so five passengers. Uh, we've really optimized everything about this for the package. So the first and second row comfort is really high. Coming around the back, we've got a lift gate, but this is a drop glass now. So this glass drops, which is Okay. Really nice for throwing a surfboard or longer gear into it. But I think in general, if I zoom all the way out, like the silhouette, I don't want to fall off the stage here, but <laughs> it looks like an R1S in almost every way. But I think I looked up the dimensions and it's, it's a, probably closest yeah. to like a, a little bit, you said it's a little longer than a Model Y? A little shorter than a Model Y. A little shorter. But very comfortable in the, in, in the second row as well. A lot of the engineering exercise was making this door the combination of this plus the second row, very comfortable. Yeah. There's a full drop glass without a division bar here. So of course optimized around creating that open air experience. So a lot of the headlining specs people are looking forward to is base price of R2. Base price of 45. $45,000. And there's several trims. So there's going to be a base single motor rear wheel drive trim. Correct. There's a dual motor trim. Yeah. And then there's a crazy triple motor R2 trim, yeah, which is yeah. the fastest one don't yeah. know the price of that yet, but that's like a sub three seconds, zero to 60. Yeah, well under three seconds. Plenty three capable. Seconds, yeah. Very quick vehicle. But this dual motor one here, I feel like is a good sweet spot of keeping a lot of capability. Yeah, it's all wheel drive. It's very quick. Yeah. Over 300 miles of range. Over 300, okay. Yeah. Is the base one at 300 or it's a little less? The, the smallest battery with rear wheel drive is under 300. Okay. But there's an over 300 rear wheel drive, over 300 all wheel drive, over 300. Uh, so tri-motor base is a smaller physical battery than the other two mm -hmm. okay yeah. and also on the outside i wanted to get to this rear part also that you mentioned so i didn't realize this pops out which yeah, is these, pretty cool very california power out which is yeah. really cool and then at the back it really honestly still looks like r1s which i think is a compliment it's got the same bar got the same logo you see r2 down here at the bottom so you know it's the new one but generally it's just a little bit squatter, a little lower, a little less ground clearance, just a little trimmer in every dimension to make it appropriately two row sized. I also, there's a couple other things on the other back side here, which is you move the charge port. Yeah, so charge port's in the back rear corner. So back rear, and if we pop it open, I believe we'll see. That's right, it's an NACS port. <laughs> so now we know R1, owners will be able to use an adapter to charge at NACS, yeah. but R2 has moved it to the back right corner and can charge at NACS natively or yeah. now CCS with an adapter. With an adapter, exactly. Okay. Tell me about these wheels. They're also kind of a little bit aero cap, but- Yeah, yellow calipers. This is a dual motor setup. But yeah, the, the, this is with the more off-road tire. There's also more on-road tire, but they, the dynamics on them are outstanding. Okay, a couple other character things for R2. Do you still have, I have to ask, the Bluetooth speaker and the flashlight from R1? We have um, a flashlight, which we should, we can look at on the other side. Okay. Oh, now we don't have the Bluetooth speaker in this, but still flashlight in the door, there very signature go. Rivian. Mm -hmm. Headliner in the vehicle, 100% um, recycled plastic. About half of that comes from ocean-based plastic. Mm -hmm. So a lot of work just on creating an environment that feels comfortable, not overwhelming, very timeless. It was really a process of extracting elements to make it as, as clean and simple as possible, but still bold. Okay, getting in the R2 here. 
pretty similar looking front seat experience and a lot of the same materials. Oh, is there still a wireless charger gonna be up front here? And it'll, yep, and it'll work really well. Nice, okay, <laughs> I hope so. Got cup holders here. And the other thing, I, I just got a, a quick walkthrough of it, but there's, there's basically two impressively different things to me, someone who's driven R1. Yeah. One is, there's not just one glove box. There's two. There's two glove boxes, okay. There's one here. One there and one for the passenger. So there's no longer the Bluetooth speaker under here, but there is some floor storage space here and there's no more under seat storage. So before there was no glove box in R1, but you had the center console storage, which you still have, and you had that seat storage. So that's mm -hmm. still there. There's two USB-C ports, which is nice, yeah. but now you have glove boxes. The other thing is this <laughs> steering wheel. So we should talk about the steering wheel. I haven't quite found a way to explain it, but I think the best comp I can give is the PlayStation 5 controller. Mm -hmm. You have these new buttons here with these haptics on them. So this big wheel here, which you can scroll up, scroll down. It's got springs and it's got resistance and they can change based on what you're controlling with the software. So here's an example. Right now, I have this wheel on the left controlling the volume dial right here. So as I scroll, it's got all these little clicks for each individual volume number, which makes sense. But if I were to explore a larger menu item, maybe it's switching between drive modes or something larger, each one of those clicks would feel with the springs and the resistance like a much larger, here you go, so a much larger click. And it actually spring stops you at the end, at the top and the bottom of the menu. It's clever, it's not quite like fully like touch screen on a steering wheel. I like that. I like that it's actually just better haptics and more responsive and more contextual haptics for what you're doing in the car. It's impressive. Yeah, I yeah we it. developed it entirely house. It's um, all the electronics to give that software defined haptics is really, uh, we wanted to create this amazing scrolling experience. Yeah, I did not expect that and that's super cool. Yeah. There's also a bunch of new looking software. So this is a software UI refresh that R2 is gonna see. R1 owners will also get a lot of this stuff, which is this new sort of, almost like an art style uh, mm -hmm. for the car. So this is the actual color of the car. Uh, this is a camp mode, which there's a new tent accessory that awesome is tent, yeah. really serious looking. Uh, there's also a super dark mode. So if you're sleeping in the car, you've got this super low light, uh, all red version, so you cannot have tons of light blasting into your eyes. Um, and also this new UI up front, which has your speed. You can again change volume and get your compass up here and things like that. So it's all looking pretty refreshed, which I think is a good thing, but still has a lot of the Rivian character. But I think we should jump in the back seat. Let's do it. Back seat. So, okay, second row of the two row R2. And uh, I gotta say, really nice second row space here. I mean, if you're anywhere from five, six to probably like six, six, you're gonna have no problem with leg room. A little bit of storage here. Two more USB-C is good. No second row screen, but physical AC controls. Yep. Good. And then uh, still a whole bunch of glass in the top. I kind of like this, though. Still yeah, like really. A, nice lighting. A lantern. Grab a handle. I mean, the goal for R2 is basically to make an appropriately sized two-row version of R1S. You want to embody, yeah, embody the, everything that is Rivian into a smaller vehicle. Yeah. Uh, and as you see, really not give up anything in terms of the experience or, or the feel of quality, uh, the way you approach materials, the seats. Um, yeah. Of course, we had to optimize to enable the price point to be much lower, but uh, we think we've really made the right trades. Things like back here, as you pointed out, these being these physical buttons here, a little simplified. Mm -hmm. um, the door system is massively simplified. Uh, the seats themselves still offer the same support and comfort, but yeah, but obviously in a two-row fashion. Also USB-C up here, and a little coat hook type thing. All right, so two last little storage tricks with R2. First of all, it does have a front trunk, which is, it's a tiny bit smaller than R1, but it still has a little bit of a sub trunk, and it's the same idea. Powered opening, not powered closing. Save a little bit of weight, save a little bit of complexity, save a little bit of money, great. But this last thing I have not seen before, so you might have to explain it, but sure. I'm gonna, it doesn't have a name either. It's just, it just you can camp inside it. Yeah. With all the seats down. Yep, yep, and I think exactly. when I say all the seats down, people are like, yeah, of course you can put the back seats down. Yeah. 
No, all the seats. The front seats fold as well. Down. Yeah. Okay, so show me this. So we this can move. go and uh, look over here. So you see the second row seats are down. Yeah. And you get a flat floor, but you can also fold the front seats. And uh, an inflatable mattress comes in and covers this, and you have a really nice, comfortable, full vehicle camping experience. And then, of course, even just the passenger seat on the driver or in the front of the vehicle going down is nice for carrying longer things. Sure. So imagine you're carrying, I don't know, band equipment or a giant telescope or... Or whatever you're carrying, yeah, whatever who you're knows? Carrying, yeah. But I've never seen the driver's seat also go down, yeah. but that makes a lot of sense. So yeah. now the headrests go down, the entire thing is flat. It's and all flat. You put the mattress in, it's some accessory you can get. It's, and, an, it's an inflatable, yeah. And there's glass on the ceiling and you're camping in your car. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of sweet. It's cool. So we've seen R2. Yep. And I think everyone was expecting R2 because yep. you guys have been sharing R2 yeah, and yeah. teasing a little bit. But you guys pulled the one more thing on us. Yep. And there's R3 as well now. Yes. So what is R3? So R3 takes um, the R2 platform, shrink it a bit, but it's a crossover that is interpreted in every way through through how Rivian would look at a crossover. So it's it's a much smaller vehicle. Uh, it has great ground clearance. You can drive it on or off road. Okay. Uh, but it's but it's an everyday vehicle. It's the kind of thing you could use in a city. It's very maneuverable and has a lot of really interesting functionality in terms of storage and cargo, and of course focused on making it comfortable to be in. So, as far as the hierarchy now, you have R1S, R1T. Then sort of you think have of those as flagship. The flagships, the most capable, the the absolute highest end. Yep. R2 coming 2026, lower entry price, yep. slightly smaller, and then R3 is going to be the smallest and the lowest price? Yeah, R3 is the lower price than R2. Okay. It's also the smallest vehicle. It's a five inch shorter wheelbase than what you see in R2. And it still keeps a lot of the same character. Again, I'm, I'm looking at the front. You keep the same shape. The this, this headlights are, again, I've seen them all over the streets. You know what yeah. you see behind you when you yeah. see the lights coming up. But then it's still got a lot of the same shapes, the yellow accents. This is also, a, I think, a new paint color, but it looks like it fits right in. Mm -hmm. But then this hatchback shape at the back here, I think is where it differs yeah. the most. And this is the rear of R3. So the lights don't wrap around as much, I notice. Mm -hmm. You've got this big Rivian text, even bigger than R2. Mm -hmm. And then you're saying something about this glass and there's some Yeah, so it's got a lift gate. The whole rear hatch lifts up. And so you can go all the way up. So that's pretty normal. Two rows. Two rows, the seats fold flat. It. A little sub trunk, I'm gonna guess. Yeah, this is a little extra storage. Sick there, okay. And this also pulls out to act as, as a seat if you need it. Nice. That's one thing, but if we look here at the, at the other side of this, mm -hmm. there's a flipper glass. Yeah. Oh. So just the top half now. So that's for, okay, loading up groceries, dropping a couple things in the trunk. Maybe you have a long, this is probably gonna be a very California thing, but your surfboard, yep. right? You just drop that in here. Maybe your bike mm -hmm. tires stick out the back and you can drop this down this and maybe hold down. it in place. That's cool. It has, a, yeah, this, the back is very different, very iconic, like slope looking type thing back here. And then uh, there's also another thing behind us. <laughs> and this we call R3X. And so this okay. is the performance version of R3 performance version of R3. So it's a little wider. And if you come to like the front view here, you can see these flares step out a little more, give you the room for wider tires. Mm -hmm. This with a tri-motor is just... That sounds absurd. It's incredible, okay. um, <laughs> incredible. But it takes the R3 product and, and really interprets it through the lens of extreme capability on and off-road. So it's, it's the smallest, probably the most nimble, but also, yeah, I can see the tires and the wheels look a little bit different. Yeah, a little wider. You've got a new accent color, Yep. if I'm not mistaken, this little orange yep. for the front tow hooks and for these mirror caps. That's, uh, it's different. Yeah, yeah. So we weren't expecting that, but that is further down the road. Yep. We don't have a, a price or a date for yep. it yet, but you're sort of showcasing after the entire R2. Yeah, this roadmap. shows the, the roadmap for R2 and R3. Okay, fascinating. Front trunk still? Front trunk still. Rear, everything the same as R3 in terms of the lift gate and the flipper glass. And ACS port at the back right ACS again. Forms, yep. Two seats, two rows of seats. Wow, same steering wheel. It's all very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay. I say this keeps the adventure theme going. Yeah. This definitely has the same character, which I'm very happy about. And uh, I know a couple people, uh, one of them's name is Andrew, who is going to be very excited about <laughs> R2. All so. right. 
Uh, we'll keep an eye on uh, the pre-orders and the release date and all that fun stuff, yeah. and hopefully, hopefully it comes out soon. Yeah, we, we're excited about it. Sweet. Thanks. Best of luck. Yeah, thanks.